What's up, guys? Welcome back. All right. Take us off here. So, um, this is my dad. <laughs> Again. I don't know if we used to start with you. I don't know. It's like, oh, you know, time to shoes. Welcome back <laughs> to the neighborhood. You know, children. Got an Change important important lesson for you guys. The little car again. Yeah. <laughs> important it's lesson for you guys. <laughs> Uh, as you guys know, I've made several videos where I talk about Reese's struggle with a relapse. And uh, I asked you guys on the community tab what questions that you had for Reese, just so that we could kind of have, to have a better format and what to say and how to start this video. Um, but basically, this is Reese's video. I'm just like here. Uh, I'm going to ask this some questions. This is the first time since I've decided to come on videos yeah. since... Um, you know, February. February. It's been a long time. It's been a long right. time. It's been a long but time since they I've been don't know that. So oh. the last video that you filmed was February, but I posted it like a month later. Oh, so it's or been a maybe minute. maybe even two months later. I'm yes. not sure. So it's been a while. And I know, obviously I know the videos that Jessica posts. I mean, nothing here is, um, you know, she doesn't do anything without permission. And we're, we're aware, you know what I mean? So this is the first time I've agreed to come on video since then to kind of talk about some of the things we've been coming through. So... Kind of give some format on what you want to do with this series. I think that would be, I think we talked about that before. So yes. since I'm comfortable with that, I want to try to give, give that in pieces up front. Because right. I mean, the, the problem is a lot of what some of you may not know is, you know, I still have a very professional and personal life. And, you know, I got a, I got a, a message on LinkedIn from somebody earlier this week, you know, maybe yesterday, the day before to tell me about something been going on and they had left it and said, I'm sorry, I sent so many paragraphs for it. I didn't realize that you were dealing with your own personal struggles because what you see on this channel reverberates through through a lot of what you may not realize, even in my professional life and people that know me, you know, that have known me for eight years outside of my own personal struggles. And they've known me as a, as a you know, a professional, you know, I mean, what are they, the connection? I mean, I, mean, I feel like at home you call yourself Emperor of Transportation. Um. <laughs> the people have known me, you know, for eight years in a professional setting that have, I've been transparent about some of my past and my history, but the, the last year of my life, you know, I've tried to do a very good job of hiding it. And, you know, some of these things that have come out, I mean, we're not, we're not bashful around here. I, I'm certainly not. I, I never pretend to be anything that I am not. I'm not ashamed. I'm, you know... I'm not going to be, you know, I'm, un I'm apologetic for the, the things that I do to the people that I hurt, but I'm not going to be apologetic for the things that I struggle with. I mean, I think that's the part of the channel that is important that, that I hope I bring to that, that like, that's, that's the realism. That's the authentic portion of it that I know I'm not a perfect person. I know that I have problems and I hope that, you know, sometimes when we talk about these things and I know I cut Jessica off that you guys understand that this affects things outside of just our personal life. We don't screen this from people that know me professionally or other things like that. I have to deal with both sides of that, and I think, and I'm okay with that. You know, so go ahead. Sorry, it's just tough because I feel like that was great because people talk about that to me, and like I've been open about it. You know, but people are like, wow, like we've you know we've heard some things. Like, is this true? And I'm like, it is. It's true. Like this has happened to me. You know, like this is what's going on. And I know that you know me as a very different person. And it's not like they've seen me like. You know what? I'm not on like world's dumbest criminals. I'm not like like <laughs> doing so. You know, I, I'm not. They don't. But they see the videos. They hear from people, and they see things. They hear things that you know other people have maybe watched or seen the videos that Jessica's made. And I have to say, yeah, that's you know, I am personally struggling with some things that you may or may not have known about, and you know that's okay. It's it's not something I have to I have to hide from. So go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I think that's a really good starting point because it paints a picture of like so many people have known Reese in recovery and did not know him before. Uh, we live in Chicago and he's from Arkansas. So when it, we came to Illinois, um, like what, three, four years ago? 2018, June, 2018. Wow. Yeah. God, that's been, fast. Yeah, four years. Um, I know. Wow. It has been four years. Yeah. Like what, two, three years ago? <laughs> when people have, you know, known Reese for four years with no context of who he was and no idea really. I mean, yes, veterans struggle with addiction, but when you say that, that's very different than actually seeing someone struggle. Um, and or, I think I... Or knowing that they're struggling actively. Right. Like. I think that we even wrote that off as that was the past and that's not who we are anymore, but mm -hmm. um, the disease of addiction is very powerful. Uh, and it will creep back in there in your you know professional life all those people saw you as that person for four years Well, I relate a lot to that too. I never saw Reese in active addiction I met Reese when he was six months sober and even just six months sober. I was like 
the stuff that you're saying, I cannot, it does not compute. I can't see that you're, you know, you're up at 4 a.m., gym, working hard, like the most disciplined person that I know. Mm. Um, I never really, I just couldn't grasp it. I also can't grasp the fact that you went to a whole ass war zone at 20. Like it right. doesn't, it doesn't yeah. register, That's, you, know? you know? Two decades ago, you know, and sometimes I forget about don't, that. I mean, don't do the math, Jesus. <laughs> you know, and some of the things that have been, I've been dealing with, with, you know, being, you know, in a relapse this year is also dealing with some, uh, you know, some PTSD issues that we know now that I didn't probably ever get, you know, I guess overcome or heal from or mm -hmm. didn't continue to get help from that have also stemmed and, you know, have combined with some of the issues that I've had this year. And we can touch base on that maybe in some later videos on some things that have happened. I don't think it's probably good for this first video, but mm -hmm. we've had some very real issues where I've struggled with that eight years later. I mean, eight years later after Jessica's known me and I got home in 2005. So that's 15 years later or more. And you realize that if you don't you know, work on these things or give these things attention, they can come back to you. They can come to the forefront. And I hope that, you know, some veterans or people that watch this and are dealing with some of the same things or may, you know, may, may, maybe make the same mistakes that I made that you have to continue to work on those things. You have to give them attention because they don't just go away. You can't just swallow real hard and forget about them for five, 10, you know, years like I did and think that they're just not there because they're, it's, it's untrue. So. I think we both thought we could outwork PTSD. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. I 100% I thought that. So what's the format of these videos? Kind of what do you want to give them in the intro? What's you, what your idea for this to kind of continue with the journey? You want to say that? Again, I know I'm I... Nervous. A little bit, a little yeah, bit. It, it's tough. So. Um, it's, it's a hard video for me. Um, it's more of a vulnerable video. I think probably the next couple might be easier in sequence. Yeah. Um, but it's it's tough to admit, you know, I think it's it's probably more freeing What we would say is the the difficulty isn't in the um, I, I guess the honesty the responsibility the difficulty is in the resistance You know mm -hmm. if you're fighting thing that that's yeah. that's really and that's some truth and I'll give my mom the shout out My mom threw that out to me, you know, what she I mean? has she, so many good pearls. She has some pretty like good a, little pearl like you know oh the, Yeah, God. it was like, you know, she goes the difficulty isn't in the being authentic or open or being honest You know and saying like this is I need help or this is what's wrong with me the difficulties in the resistance is when you fight, yeah. you know, and, and I was like, damn, it was like a two liner. I was like, shit, like my mom dropping like ninja bombs on yes. me, you know what I mean? She, she was does. good. I was like, I was like, shit, that was really good. And it stuck with me. It has. You're, I mean, you're fresh off of this relapse. It's oh, yeah. very, very new. Um, so like mentally. Give him some time on here. What were you thinking? I was, I was thinking that we would do videos, you know, the first one and then maybe um, 60 days, 90 days, six months and a year mm -hmm. to just see your progress and how you're feeling. Yeah. We're, we're, um, in, we're in between two weeks and 30 days somewhere. I can't give you an exact day. I don't think Jessica can either. Jessica can. Jessica can. <laughs> Jessica can give you, she can give you the day. <laughs> so, you know, we're working on it, but I mean, the commitment level is there and we'll talk about some things that I've been doing, but go ahead. I was just going to ask you at first, like, how are you feeling being so fresh out of a relapse on um, and a stimulant, which means you weren't sleeping, you weren't really eating, you weren't taking care of your body. So the no. brain is gonna have some catch up, the body has some catch up to do. How are you physically and mentally feeling right now? Good. I think uh, in a better spot, and for people that don't really understand that, um, and it, it, it starts with being stuck in a, a cycle of paralysis where you're dependent upon a stimulant to function in your personal, professional life. Things start to deteriorate around you, become unmanageable, and then you lean more heavily because you're a drug addict on this substance because you think it's gonna be able to stimulate you in a manner in which you can fix the damage you've caused. So it puts you on a perpetual wheel of dysfunction, deterioration of, of, of uh, basically uh, of, of, of being a destroyer of your own life and you don't realize it. Um, so I feel really good. My clarity just for me personally and mentally comes back very quickly in the first two, two weeks to a month. But I know that usually it takes several months in my past history of, of overcoming the same problem. It takes several months to really start to get the more focused to the picture, you know? That first 15 to 30 days is, is, is huge. It's big for anybody that is going through this or dealing with somebody that is close to this going through this. That first 15 to 30 days, not on that stimulant where you're sleeping, you're eating, you're hydrating, is definitely 
big. It's very, very big. But focus, actual focus to that, some dexterity to the picture that you're seeing, the reality that's shaped around you, doesn't start to formulate till about three to six months out. Mm -hmm. And that's the beginning. So, and I know this, that means it's a very long journey for me right now. And it's at the beginning right now, I feel good about it. I feel happy, healthy. I'm glad, you know, that we're doing the things that we've done and some of the steps that we've taken. I mean, you know, we'll touch on that in a second, but yeah. I'm just really happy you're here. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it, it's tough and I'm trying to articulate this the best that I can for an audience that maybe knows me differently or that maybe is new to this and seeing this video yeah. like in a way that I hope it makes sense to the average person, especially because it's like for us, like for me, it's very difficult because I can say all these things. It's a puzzle that I've put together before. It's like having that little, like that, that hundred piece puzzle as a little kid and you know it how, how it goes back together, right? And now the puzzle's broken up again in front of you. And you know how to do it. You've done it before, so you should be able to do it quicker, right? And that doesn't necessarily mean that's the case. It's still a puzzle. And the pieces have to go together in the same sequence. You still have to address it in the same manner. And there's things that are going to be difficult that maybe you've forgotten. There's things about this puzzle that you have forgotten about. Just because you've put it together before does not mean it's still not a puzzle. And I'm, hopefully I'm trying to articulate that to people that are either in their first time of restruggling or a, a repeat restruggle like me, so. A lot of people want to know why. Um, what caused you to pick up anything in the first place? And I do just want to say that like, his value is not determined on the number of days he has not ingested a chemical. Yeah. I just want to say that, but why? What was, what was the why? I guess we just, I think I've told you, like I think you've asked me like before, not, not too long ago, like what, what happened? What was it? And it really was just a, a happenstance. You know, I was very hard fast in my recovery that these are certain things that I cannot do. I cannot do this, 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 because one is never going to be enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I knew that and I held very strong with those convictions and they weren't a ton of them, but they were some very, very solidified things that I knew I could not do. I allowed myself to be in a situation where I had to make a decision. And the decision was over one of these things that I said, you can't do this or you are going to have a problem. And I chose wrong. And that is as easy as it gets. I won't go into a lot of the detail, but it was one of those situations. It's like these three things, you know, you cannot do. And I allowed myself to get into a situation where, you know, they'd say those little quibs, those little things like in 12 step programs, if you go into a barbershop, you're gonna get a haircut, right? I didn't hang out in barbershops, but it was still one of those situations where I thought I was okay. I thought I had a little bit of control. I was farther enough along and I was put in a position where I thought, you know what? One of these three things doesn't matter and I can go another direction. And it didn't escalate super quickly, but it did escalate in a much quicker manner than I would have thought so, right? And uh, that's what happened. It was just, it was that easy. It was not a huge thing. It was one of those things that these are three lines that I can't cross. I got comfortable. I allowed myself to be in a situation where somebody offered me the opportunity to cross one of those lines and I chose to do it. And that's all it took. That's all it took. As much as I hated to admit, like I thought I could do that and it wouldn't matter how wrong I was, <laughs> how wrong I was. That's just what addiction does. It's so powerful. It's like, it's just, it's just a line. It's just one line, dude. You're right. It's never, it's just that you have to know. It's like for me, I mean, like I can go to the dentist and have them prescribe me pain pills and it's, I just don't care about that. I'm just not going to, even if I take some, I'm like, eh. I'm just not that really caught up in it, you know what I mean? But I knew there were things in addiction that I could not do. Has this relapse felt different than others in the past? Did you relapse in the past or was it just I, like I won't say, yeah, I just, it's different because it's the only real relapse. I mean, yeah. in this struggle this year, I've had little bouts of sobriety, three weeks, four weeks, you know what I mean? And then you kind of drop off again. I had that initially when I got clean the first time back in 2013. But that was the first real bout of, you know, trying to get sober and finding sobriety that I'd had in a decade, you know? So, I mean, I got to the point where I was like, 
I couldn't believe that there were people that actually told the lie that they don't do anything every day. I'm like, oh, come on. Somebody, <laughs> somebody does something every day. So this is the first real relapse I think I've ever dealt with in my lifetime that doesn't, you know, that has ended with a long bout of sobriety. Has it been easier with this relapse since you have Jess and the kids to support you or is that harder? It's a good question. I know you're not going to like this answer and it's tough. Okay. I'll probably have to answer for it no. after the video. No, <laughs> I want you to tell the I truth. Know. It's, it's difficult. It's much more difficult. And I know I've told Jessica that, that before when I got sober in 2013, you know, this was almost a decade ago now, it was just me. I didn't have to worry about a partner you know, a household, two small children at home that need me to be something that I am struggling to be on the daily. You understand what I'm saying? Like that's when it's just you and you're like, man, all I got to do is just sleep on this couch, eat a biscuit, drink some water today and just not mess up and do drugs. Well, man, that's easy. You know, after a week, you're like, I can just do that and go to the gym today. And then you just keep adding to it. When you have all this other stuff, it, it's it's very, very much a different scenario. And it's made it harder mentally to, to compartmentalize. So yeah, it's tough. A lot of people want you to know that they love you and they support you and that they're team race. <laughs> And right. you're not a failure and you have a whole army behind you. I, I appreciate that and I know that there's a lot of folks out there and you know I've always tried to be an authentic voice on this channel and try to be as upfront and as you know transparent as I can. That's always been kind of my leadership style and professionally and personally. I mean you know I am kind of I play it to the bone and you get you get you get what you get with me and I know sometimes that could maybe rub some people the wrong way or maybe put people a little offset but there really is no underlying tone. There is no, you know, an agenda with me. Like, and, and I hope as we work through this and try to make videos and there's no promises that say I may slip back or may, we don't know how that looks. I'll try to be the same person that I've always been before as I am, you know, trying to work through this now on camera and off. I don't know how much we'll try to keep to some sort of schedule, but you know, this is the first time in a long time I've been on. So I'll do the best yeah. I can. The room so. is different now. It is. It's a lot different. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I like it. You I like, like it now? Yeah, I haven't been in here in, yeah. you know, in a while. So yeah, it's pretty pretty slick. So yeah, go ahead. Um, someone asked how long it's going to take me to trust you again. Oh shit. How that's... long do we think that's going to be? Oh. <laughs> is that overwhelming? That thought? Um, it's not because, I mean, before you answer, we've had a lot of these these conversations where... You know, you've said like, if the roles were reversed, how would you be? And it's like, yeah. Shh. you know, and, and you've, you've always said, even in this scenario, you've always been on this side of the fence, never on your side. Oh and my so God. when you had, when now that you're on this side, you're like, whoa, <laughs> like, I give the best advice and I know that I do, um, but I don't take it very well. Uh, and for me, this has felt very personal. I mean, obviously it's personal. It's my person. Um, it has felt like a personal, I don't know how to frame that. Has it felt like what I'm doing in a self-destructive way is a personal attack on you and our relationship? Kind of. And and I have, I have to separate those two things. The disease of addiction is very powerful. Yeah. And that he is not doing this to hurt me. He is hurting. He's struggling with something. And that is separate from me. Um, but it has felt so painful and it's really hard you know i've spent this whole year crying by the phone waiting by the phone scared even when he has been here and he has some time um because this has kind of been a pattern where he'll be okay and then not or just be like sitting on the couch and then just gone the next second that i look so i'm like is he just gonna leave He's just gonna leave like out of nowhere and i my body has been in survival mode fight or flight mode, just constant fear and anxiety. I have to make sure that my mental health is okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that a lot of what he has been going through has triggered a lot of toxic behaviors from my past come forward that I worked really hard to heal. And I'm very aware of that and I'm working through that. And it's hard in a relationship back to the core question. And I realize, I mean, because people will say it a lot in business, it can take a decade to build trust and you can destroy it in 10 minutes. I want to believe that when he's like, you know, going to the gas station, 
or running around to the store real quick. I want to believe that that's where he says he's going um, because like it's you. Like I, I've never in my life thought like he's not really going to the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be right. I've never thought like he won't. He won't be right. I'm going back. to get some milk two days later. Hey, that, the line for that milk was real long. Shit, dude. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of people you have need, to go to Hooverville. What people need that though? milk? Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. Right. So I want to believe that yeah. he is where he says he is, and he's doing what he said he's going to do, and that's just going to take time. One day at a time. As, as cliche as that is. And it's really hard to say that on film, and yeah. I won't say it's. No, it's really hard to live that day to day. Than it is to say it on camera here for this this video. Do you yes. see what I'm saying? Like, we can say that and be okay with it, and in real life, what we what people are missing is it comes out like and, this. And it, <laughs> yeah, in this moment, it's like this. Right. But in two hours from now, you know, it can be something totally different, and that's just part of the the condition, part of the issue, part of the struggle that makes life real in these scenarios and yeah and, and i think that you know we're still trying to both trying to come to grips with that and i think that's what's you know people are like oh the, well yeah of course it looks good it, and it, we're not faking it it is good right now right it can but it can, be, it can be it can we had a good day but it could be a bad morning tomorrow <laughs> you know what i mean like i could go get pancakes and she's like is this motherfucker has been gone for 30 minutes you know these pancakes must be taken you know i don't just, want to be that person and, and she doesn't but i you know i have to also take responsibility for my contribution in creating this problem you know so we both it's it's a meet in the middle thing. Yeah. it's i just don't want anybody to think that we can talk about these things and be very forefrontal about the the way we address these things and the way that we're trying to work them but they are not easy questions they are not easy problems they can feel easy in the moment they can sound easy can, and you can have a good day, but they can all be a struggle. All those things that were easy today could be very hard for us tomorrow. And that's part of the journey, I think. I have had to learn the basics. Um, I cannot control him. I, I cannot stop him. It's not my fault. It's not a personal attack on me. And all I can do is take care of my mental health, heal my triggers, work through that in therapy, and make sure that I'm okay and the kids are okay. I can't, I can't stop him. I can't rip him out of places. I can't, I can't beg him. I can't cry. I can't love him we, we, into sobriety. And, and we can say, you know, I want to make the point, like, I think, and, you know, I don't use actively at the house. Like, no. I, you know, when I know that I'm struggling and I have a problem, I... And that's what makes this hard is because I will leave because yeah. I'm not going to do that at home. I'm not going to endanger our children. I'm not going to do that in a way that puts anything we have into jeopardy. But at the same time, you know, it, and that's part of the guilt, the isolation, the shame. And Jessica knows that's what I'm doing, you know. Yeah. So I will leave and not answer my phone. I will turn it off. And for days I, I may be using, you know, in solitary because I'm not going to do that at home. So I want to make sure that we say that up front. Like, right. but that's what makes some of this stuff very, very difficult to challenge with because I'm not actively using at home. But so that's why when she says like, if he leaves, I can't control that. I can't control what he runs and goes and do all right. because I, I know that like when I'm an active addiction, I'm using, it's not, it's not okay for me to come home. And I don't do that. I can't control, have you seen this person? I can't fucking control him. I have no control over it. So knowing that nothing I say will, you know, make him stop in that moment is really hard for me because this is my person. And yeah. I'm just like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> That's how it feels, right? It's not his job to make me feel better while all of this is going on. It's his job to get better. And it's my job to work through my own trauma and my own triggers and make sure that I'm providing a safe home for our kids. And I have some conflicting things. Like I have, you know, CPSTD, which you threw at me the other day. I mean, I don't even know yeah. what that means. Like complex. I complex PTSD. PTSD. So we have some things like that that are also part of some of the things that I'm trying to rework through that make this, this issue a little hard. The reason this video is here, and the reason we feel better about making it now is some of the active steps that I've taken that we've taken, you know, to utilize the resources around us to make sure that I am moving in the right direction. Um, you know, I'm a veteran and I, I, you know, I do have VA health benefits and I've reached out to the local, the VA center here in, in the Chicagoland area, which is Heinz. They have a great program. They have lots of resources that you can use, individual counseling, psychotherapy, PTSD. I mean, they have VCC remote counseling sessions that you can do, you know, every day of the week, two times a week, different programs. I mean, if you need, you know, medication that the, maybe you want to try to work, there's 
lots of things that you can do that I'm now actively using. And it feels like they're almost overwhelming me now. They send, send letters and texts. I mean, I am fully involved with, with the VA and trying to get some of those resources to me and to us, even to the point where they have programs to help us with couples therapy. As they should. I, I mean, as a veteran, those are those are free resources to you. So I, I hope that if there's any veterans or people that are watching this that want to reach out in the comment section and say, hey, how do I ask about these things or what I can do? Please do so, and I hope Jessica will bring that to me so we can at least maybe try to answer your questions just a little bit roughly. I mean, I don't want to pretend to be a counselor, neither does she, but for veterans, these are things that are at your disposal, and I'm actively, you know, using those resources now, and, you know, I mean, they're immense. They're abundant, and you can call up to your counselor and say, hey, I don't like my current program. Can we get on a phone call tomorrow, remote, from my laptop or my smartphone, and start looking at other options? And they're like, sure, we'll set it up. Boom, they're on the phone with you. You can start working through. I mean, it is your program. These are your resources. They can tell you every, they have a buffet of things that you can use and it's your decision to use those things, so. I will say that it did take a long time to get that. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> it's tough. Two months? Two months. We made the phone call a couple months ago to start even get, where there were several enrollment calls, like an enrollment call for an enrollment they, they call. They long, like hour, hour long phone, interview, yeah. two hour long, and then I'd follow up with that, and then a recommendation interview for other things. Like, it took a long time, but once you do all that shit for two months, then it's a lot easier. Once you're, you're in, in, you're in. All you gotta do yes. is you you put, but it's, yeah, you're right. We, we should throw that caveat in there that we know it's a difficult uphill battle if you're not inside the program. And, you know, we had to make that decision. We made that together. And Jessica really was a huge advocate for that. She's like, you're a veteran. You've done this before. You did it in Arkansas. Please start the process now. And she, made some calls for me. She set up some of the initial things for me and said, you know, there's a couple times where I'm like, I'm not getting on that phone call. She's like, get your ass in there on that phone call right now. You have a Zoom, get your ass in there. So I'll give her a lot of credit. She did. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, it doesn't matter. She's like, you better get your ass up and get yep. on that Zoom call. My laptop's open, get in there. Like, so like, and you have to use those resources and walk through those steps, even though they're long, they seem complicated and there's a lot of red tape, but once you get there, you have full access yeah. and they can do anything that you need them to do. And they're very responsive. What It's like once you break through the little, like the, like, the portal, like the portal. What? How strong are they? Yeah. How how long are they willing to endure? Yeah. Like Christ. But dude. once but once you get in there, you really can call and say, "Hey, I need you to jump on the phone with me. This is not working." Yeah. I wanted, and they, we did that just this, after your boot camp phase. Yeah, just this week. Like I said, hey, we right. want Jessica and I talked, and we said, hey, what we're doing, we think we can do more. Some of this isn't working. Yeah. Got on the phone. They changed it that day. Right. That day, they changed it for me. At first, the program was outpatient rehab, um, but the class was really skim and not, he wasn't getting anything out of it. It wasn't really robust. It had two different phases. Monday, Wednesday, Friday going. I do um, drug test drops every Monday um, and Friday, but those were 45 minutes away at the Heinz Large Hospital, where we have a C box somewhere here that I can get to in less than 10 minutes. I can still go. They have all my my blood work on file. They have my I can walk in on Mondays and Fridays and still do my drug test drops because those those keep you accountable. There's no punishment for it, but they keep you accountable. It says I am willing to show up, give my urinalysis, and I know it's going to be clean. Urinalysis. Urinalysis. What I mean. Thank hey, you. But you know, you're willing to pee into a cup. You gotta church it up, Reese. <laughs> pee into a cup. I mean, but if you fail, nobody calls you and says you're out of the program. Right. But they call and you say you're aware that you you failed and you said that this is something that you want to do. Yeah. You know, I mean, they they it's an accountability thing. But instead of driving 45 minutes on top of what I was doing with the other class, mm -hmm. I can do it in less than 10 right here. It's right? overwhelming. So yeah. it's just just little things, adjustments that help you, you know. So I've tried some some antidepressants before. Um, this current, I mean, I have a, a program counselor that helps me with all my classes, um, and then I also have a, a psychotherapist, a licensed you know physician, a psychiatrist that also works with me, um, and they're trying me on some Lexapro. Is what I'm currently doing. I'm maybe three weeks into it now, so it's really early to tell. I've tried Zoloft in the past, didn't respond to it really well, So, but I'm willing to try. In previous experiences, I was very, I guess, ignorant to, to how oh Zoloft and SSRIs yes. worked and yes. what they could do, and I didn't respond well, and I just stopped taking them, and I didn't tell anybody. 
Right. Until and, it was full blown. Yeah, and like, I was almost like going into SSR. I like. You went through full. It looked like heroin withdrawal, yeah. and I'm like, "What is going on?" And he's like, "Well, I, I stopped taking my soul off," and I'm like, "Reese, why would you do that?" That was in like March or April or something. April. It was April? like April, and I was just like just shaking like, for like a what? week, like, and I was just in there. It's like I don't know what's going on. I mean, I just yeah. And they had ramped me up so quick, so I told him I'd try again with something different. But at least I'm more familiar now, and I can talk to Jessica and try to be honest with her and the doctor and say, "This is what I'm feeling. This is what's going on. I don't. I'm unsure about this." I was just so ignorant before. I'm like, yeah, just I mean, take two, take three. Like, you know, just, and then finally I was like, I don't like the way that makes, this makes me feel. I'm just gonna take none. I can't take SSRIs because I have severe ADHD. I will forget to take it and it won't work. So the way that SSRIs work is you have to take it every day. It builds up in your brain and then it helps regulate certain things. Um, when you stop, it, you rip it everything out all at once. It's like taking all the wires in the back of the TV and just ripping it out at once. It's like rewiring it to work like it's supposed to or the way right. you think it should work. And, and you're kind of unsure that this is the way it's supposed to work, but you're guessing. We've decided to guess that these wires should go here. And then if you're like, I don't like the way this feels, and you just yank them out, and there are no wires now, that's a problem. Don't just stop your SSRIs. And yeah. Reese, Reese is so fucking tough and so hardcore. He's like, eh, fuck that shit. I didn't know. It was like, I just, <laughs> it feels, this feels like a good first video. Yeah. It's enough for me. I can tell you, I'm if starting you're, to- If you're at a 10. I'm at a 10. I'm starting to drain a little bit. So let's, let's try to wrap this up. We'll make another video. Jessica put it on schedule. I, I really appreciate all the support out there, you know, and all the people that are understanding, you know, and I want people to understand that, you know, this is not Jessica's fault. I've seen, you know, I know God damn I, right it's not. She's seen she showed me some 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 comments where people made some things. And that's just not the way it's supposed to work, man. Like it's just, you know, my 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 behavior and my response to things is, is not her responsibility and vice versa. But we're supposed to be a team. We're supposed to work together and you know, I don't want people out there to, to think that in any way, shape, or form, because she makes a happy video tomorrow, <laughs> that that makes this video invalid, right? You know what I mean? Because this is still a very real video. And these are just things that we work on. These, this is part of, part of life as an addict, part of life as a couple, part of life is trying to build a family. Like, there's going to be tough times, and I want everybody to understand that, like, we're trying to be as transparent and upfront as we can here with this even at the detriment of knowing that there are now nearly millions of people that watch these videos. And I just think that they're relatable because I know that we're not the only ones that deal with this. And, and I try to remind myself that even though I'm exposing potentially, you know, me to some negative feedback in a professional way outside of this world, I hope that in some way it helps and resonates with people um, that watch this, you know, it, you know, now, next week, next month, next year. And, you know, hopefully we can continue on with this. So I did want to just add to that just a second. I know you're at 10. Yeah. I know you're at 10. Um, this does take a lot of personal and emotional and mental <sighs> sacrifice to be this vulnerable on the internet. Um, and I'm, I'm really glad that you said that. This is not easy. I don't recommend any of my other content creator <laughs> friends to do this. Uh, stick to the, the yeah. content that you make that's not personal because it's very, very mentally challenging for us but um and, and i know i've had people that are specifically because of the things i've made on this channel tell me straight up like you know if i wanted you to work with me in my current environment and these are high level executive jobs you know i, I contrary to popular belief in the in the current environment i do very well i'm I, i'm good at what i do Everyone knows that. but people have told me like some of the videos that are out there would make it very, very difficult because they're public for me to sell you to my CEO or my boss of this $500 million company because potentially it could be damaging. And that's hard for me to accept because I think that I'm just a person. I'm like everybody else. There's a lot of people that live with the same struggle. And so like she said, this is a, this is a difficult topic. If you guys are struggling with active addiction, I am a partner with Groups Recover and they're bomb as hell and they're 420 friendly and they support everything. They sent me a alpaca blanket and socks. Alpaca, and it's great, it's on the couch. It's not made it's of alpaca. <laughs> um, no, I just they're just an incredible team of people and we are opening in a lot of different states. They focus on opioid addiction and they're just great. So I always leave my link with them in the description box of every single video. Smash that subscribe button. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't believe how bad I crushed that button at home. I crushed the button, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, I had to get that one in. I crushed that button at home. So you guys smash that subscribe button get out. down below. <laughs> Thumbs up the shit out of this video. We'll see you. Give me all that outro. I'll leave it in. Yes! <laughs> yes!
<laughs> no, one more inch is all. We <laughs> now the fellas roll. We all just need one more inch. You don't need one more inch. Oh, I don't. I don't need one more inch. Oh, this one's so a far big away. dick energy. It's a great song, it's man. Like he is high right now. <laughs> <laughs> It's an awesome song, man. Did you get, did you get that all out of your system? Get that in my system. Here Doubt we go. Doubt it. <laughs>